Praise the Lord. Right now I'd like to do this video on Ephesians 2 at the start. And I'd like to look at a few cases of doctrine that is found in the scriptures in the which we should be able to see that Ephesians 2 is talking about a spiritual issue and certainly not an issue according to creation. Needless to say that the heretics will use the passage to teach that we are born a child of wrath. So they will take by nature and of course make it about how you were created. And that will perhaps be followed with the fact that Adam sinned for you. Okay? Adam nature. Okay? And it does say in Ephesians 2 3. That we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, not as all, but as others. And I like to just first talk about a few reasons why this does not have to do with creation, okay? But choice is because first you have Paul talking about you walked according to the course of this world. You know, babies don't walk and they really don't know anything about this world. Okay. And they, in the same, don't know anything about the world to come. Jesus used them as an example of the world to come and the kingdom. But he did that due to their innocency. Well, people take away their innocency with saying they're of wrath, okay? God's pleasure is not in wrath in its initial because he's made everything for his pleasure and he has no pleasure in the death of them that dieth. So being a child of wrath by nature is not bringing God pleasure. God will indeed take pleasure out in destroying because the Lord our God loveth judgment. However, this is not his will that you would be spiritually dead. And that solves it. You know, when looking at Ezekiel 18, 1 Corinthians 15, Revelation 4, that alone solves it. So he made Satan perfect in beauty. And sinners today walk according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So there must be disobedience and it's against God's will. It's against God's pleasure because he gave the seed at his pleasure to the body and it is our God that fashions in the womb, forms in the womb. Okay. And it was the devil that was perfect in beauty and fell because iniquity was found in him. And this is the same way the sinner is spoke of in the scriptures by this nature, which is not by physical, but a spiritual nature that is chosen. Okay. And I think some of the same points could be spoke of that there's a fulfilling of the desires okay use the negative certainly here in verse three that we just don't see from children because you have to know the good and not do it for it to be a sin and for whatever you think a one-year-old or two-year-old is doing that's sinful a lot of the time it's not even sinful anyway if a human were to do it however what they might say is you know they are jealous or selfish you'll have to first make the case that they know otherwise, okay? That they have a thorough knowledge of the opposite of jealousy and the opposite of selfishness, 
okay, which they don't, and, you know, reasonable people know that. They cannot even explain it with their mouth, okay? So when you have to give an account for all your deeds and children are sinners, you say, and they're doing sinful acts, they cannot even speak about them. Okay, we're talking about young children here, you know, toddlers or such. Infants don't even talk, okay? How can they give an account for them? You know, a reasonable account, yes, that's correct, Lord. When I was two, I was entirely selfish, okay? They don't understand. And you can see that if you've been around a young child. They don't have a consistent outlook toward discipline. They don't understand sometimes when they're being told they're wrong. They just don't even understand. Sometimes they do get to a point where they start to pick up on things, okay? But you have to know the gravity of the choice and the different choices involved, and you have to have a knowledge of good and evil, all right? So my point is, is that nature here is used in a spiritual sense, and it is there used negatively, of course, after a choice is made and iniquity is found in you like Satan. So basically, Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 teaches that you have to be made perfect to be compared to Satan later, okay? If indeed you're going after the devil, okay? It really wouldn't be going after the devil if you were made of the devil, okay? You wouldn't have to walk it. You would just be born thus. All right, and Paul would have said something like that, but he never did. Paul said he was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and he died. So he was alive without the law because he was a baby, okay, and he didn't know the law, okay. But the commandment came, like, you know, example, thou shalt not covet, which is an inward understanding. It's as well found on the tables of stone, but it's an inward understanding. So when you covet, that's a choice. But Paul says he was alive without that once. So whatever you think a child is being covetous or selfish or something, Paul would not have agreed with that. Okay. My point is, we have in the Bible a teaching like this in Psalm 109. Now, it's a very popular scripture used in Deuteronomy 24, 6 from the position I hold. Excuse me, Deuteronomy 24, 16. I'm going to read it. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. So you have to indeed choose the sin. You cannot be put to death for another man's sin, according to this scripture. And that can mean a few different things. But one thing certainly we should look at is... Adam, our father, you know, since we all come from one blood, what he did, we're not put to death for. However you want to look at that, okay, it's up to you. But we see God's character and judgment, all right? Now, taking all this into Psalm 109, this is a psalm about Judas, okay? And there's a few things that are said that show the spiritual seed, spiritual nature, okay? Psalm 109, verse 9 to start. Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he has and let the stranger spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither let there be any favor to his fatherless children. Favor his fatherless children. I think I read it wrong. Let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Verse 13, let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continually, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. 
Now, I'm not going to keep reading, but the Lord is just in judgment. And from what we read in Deuteronomy 24, 16, this would seem different, okay? Because it's speaking a rebuke against his children and his wife and his fathers and his mother, almost regardless, as if this is being passed on or something. But it's not because our Lord judges righteously, according to Deuteronomy 24, 16, Ezekiel 18. What this is, is a spiritual understanding, okay? And this is what Paul's giving in Ephesians 2, is that any that follow this man's work, okay, let them be such, okay? And that is indeed a biblical premise, okay? And it's even used in words that we would expect to see in doctrine on creation, you know, such as, posterity and generation and things like this that are indeed used for genealogies and you know the flash but the context says that this is about a spiritual problem in these people because god does not just judge like that by his creation okay it's got to be the spiritual wickedness that brings the judgment okay so all that follow after judas in his sand or anything such like, you know, what does it say in verse 6? Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. So this is the prince and the power of the air. Satan was perfect, then he fell. And then you fall the same way spiritually. So the flesh is just the neutral in the whole thing. And then the Bible uses this wording of... You know seed or nature and we see this as well in the old testament and i'll go to a few verses psalm 37 28 for the lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints they are preserved forever but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off so here we know a seed for sure is referring to a spiritual problem because it cannot just be inherently physical or else we would all be wicked according to what they're saying but the Lord talks about his saints. Now, some will, of course, say that once you become a saint, original sin goes away from you. So they'll have to cut out the excuses of original sin. However, that would be, in fact, that Jesus died on a cross and as well gives the Holy Ghost in regeneration for something that another man did. And that cannot be, okay? Paul, when talking about regeneration in Titus 3, made it all about his choices, right? And it had nothing to do with Adam. And he gave the entitlement to all of them for what they were doing, okay? And to be regenerated cannot be to be generated again as a quote-unquote saint, they say, if you weren't holy at one point before. Okay, because there's nothing to compare to in regeneration. Okay, and that's another problem for them. But we see that language there was seed, seed of the wicked. Okay, that's the nature of Satan. Okay, and that's what the context supports. Okay, not that Satan has flesh and blood, of course. But on a spiritual sense, the words are used in this capacity to show that there is a family. There is an actual kingdom of darkness. Okay. Let's see. Isaiah 14, 20. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial. And this is actually a spot here in the scriptures about Lucifer, about Satan. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed your land and slain your people. The seed of evil doers shall never be renowned. Okay. So my point is this, is that the nature of wrath, and we know that the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. It's referring to the spirit entering into the fire of hell. Okay as well in the scriptures it's a choice okay and that is the blanket teaching of ezekiel 18 and as well the teaching of romans 1 okay that there is knowledge of god that can be retained it was just not chosen 
to be retained. And then God gives you over to this rejected mind. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth true forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth forever. Of the blind, the Lord raiseth them that are bad.